Why did the admin chicken jump in the river? Admin chicken. Is this another animal joke? Yeah, it's, it's Salesforce admin. Just just answer the question mark. Fine. Why did the admin chicken jump in the river? He wanted to learn about flow. <laughs> you know, visual workflow, flow, flowing no, water, river. Yeah, no, I I got the joke, Brian. It It, it just wasn't that funny. Are any of our jokes funny? Well, no, but that one was not even really Salesforce, right? I mean, it kind of... Uh, okay, I, I guess it was a bit forced. Oh, forced. Mm. It's good to see you, Mark. Same here. Well, I mean, we often see each other, but it's typically, you know, through a screen. Right, right. It's it's not like today where we're totally recording in person. Yep. Live and unscripted for Midwest Dreaming in Chicago, Illinois. Right, exactly. We are absolutely live. Yep. There's no way that we actually completely ran out of time with everything that was going on. Yeah, we definitely did not have anyone double book ourselves with the expert nope. booth and then nope. having to get together on a Saturday and redo this and then do it over again because someone didn't record the audio because, correctly. Nope, none of that happened. This is totally live. We are seeing each other right now. There's not even a script I promise. That's really, right. There's, we there's are a complete professionals. That's right. Well, actually, we don't get paid for this, so can we consider ourselves professional podcasters? We can consider ourselves professionals. That doesn't necessarily mean anything, but that never stopped a good measure of the human population, did it? Very true. Mm. Are you pondering what I'm pondering, Mark? Uh, I think so, Brian, but how are we going to teach a goat to dance with flippers on? Carefully. Anyways, I think it's time for another Fred. Oh, you're you're seriously going to keep calling the segment, which shall not be named, Fred, even though it shall not be named. Well, Fred is shorter than the segment, which shall not be named. True, but it it's, doesn't exactly describe the actual... Well, look, you know, we, we haven't gotten any other suggestions, so it's going to be Fred until something better comes along. All right. Okay. Okay. So, Fred for those of you who have not been listening yet, is where we talk to a variety of people and ask the same question we hope for interesting and honest answers. That's right. We will continue today by learning how people were introduced to Salesforce by asking, what was their first time like? With Salesforce. With Salesforce. Right. So we were. So me and the project manager were driving 45 minutes each way to this class, to the Admin 201 class. And uh, we're sitting in the class, and we know what's happening with the project. Like, we're kind of in panic mode because the project's behind. And uh, we get to, they get to section in the class on workflows. And I remember, so the guy's name was Daniel. And I remember looking over at Daniel and going, holy shit, this is going to fix everything. Like, this fixes all of our shit. This fixes everything. And, uh, and that was when I signed up for a dev account. And uh, that was my first time. Sounds like your first time was very... Um Smooth. Smooth. It was smooth. Yeah. It was smooth. It was, um, although maybe a bit rough at the same time. It was both of those things. Yeah. Yeah. Especially because you did have to go a long way. I had to go a long way. 45 minutes. That's a long time. That's a long time. Yeah. Uh, Each way. That's some endurance. Each way. Oh, dude. Totally. Wow. Yeah. And and at the end, you got your fixed. My was fixed. Right. So we're live at Midwest Streaming in room 204, and in addition to Mark and myself, we're joined by Nick. Howdy. How are y'all doing today? So Nick, how do you pronounce your last name? Lindbergh. Lindbergh. Yep. As in the baby. As in the baby, yes. I thought it was originally a pilot. Was it really a pilot? Well, not the the baby was the pilot. The show didn't take off? What? No. Lindbergh was the pilot who flew across the ocean. Oh, that type of pilot. I thought you were talking like a television show pilot. For a second, I thought you were misunderstanding. I thought I was talking about a Salesforce pilot. Like, a, like We really like, should have scripts. I, we, we should. So Nick was nice <laughs> enough to join us today to talk about 
I forget. What are you talking about today, Nick? Well, we're just shooting the breeze mostly, but we're going to talk about nonprofits. Today. Segment title: Shooting the breeze. Shooting the breeze. Breeze shooting. Breeze shooting. Something like that. Yeah. We're really focused. <laughs> I like this. This is fun. Yeah. So, where do you work? <laughs> I work for a small consulting shop of the Twin Cities called Red Path Consulting Group. Okay. Uh, kind of prior to that, essentially, how I got my Salesforce start was I worked for a nonprofit, and we all looked around the room, going, "We need a database, and we need." Um, something to track all of our donors and programs, and we all went to, looked around and went, okay, well, who's going to implement this? And and so I somehow got the short end of that stick, or maybe the better end of the stick, I don't know yet, um, and we said, okay, well, I'm going to implement Salesforce for us. And so spent a couple of years building out Salesforce for us, getting all of our donations in there, all of our programs in there, and kind of started getting, drinking that Salesforce Kool-Aid, and kind of the rest is history from there. So your office is located in Minneapolis? Mm-hmm. Are all the hallways colored red? You know, they aren't colored red, but we do have a red carpet that goes down the middle of our office. So we do have that going so for us. there's a red path. Yes. There is a red path. Instead yeah. of singing Yellow Brick Road, do you sing about the red path? You know, I've jokingly said that we should, but it hasn't, hasn't cut off. Well, hasn't I think we on. should start that here. No. We, can we do that? No, we should. Follow, 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 oh my God. follow, follow, follow the reddish path. Okay, stop, stop. No, <laughs> stop. I'm from Kansas. You can't sing that song. It's an offense. Why is it, it offense? It's it's like a civil offense in some towns it to sing anything to with, from Wizard of Oz, okay? It has nothing okay? to do with Kansas. Uh-huh. Dorothy was from Minnesota. Mm-hmm. Was she? Mm-hmm. What, how did... How... You are so lost. Okay, so anyways... Why is working with nonprofits different than working with a for-profit company? You know, in certain cases it, it is different, but in other cases it isn't different. So why what what parts of it is different is that you're sometimes doing different tools, and so the language is different. So instead of sales, you're talking about donations, and you know, you're, but at the same time you're talking about marketing, and maybe instead of saying marketing, you're saying outreach. So the terms are different, but kind of the same concepts and same thought processes processes are the same. And so we're all still trying to sell something. We're trying to sell us and our mission. And we're just maybe having different terms and having different things from there. You know, where nonprofits also are slightly different are that, actually, I kind of look at nonprofits. They kind of are doing things in a slightly different vein. So one of the big reports I always run is last year, but not this year. So what donor hasn't given this year yet, but donated last year. And actually, for some of my for-profit clients I work with, I steal some of the stuff I worked on the for-profit side, or on the non-profit side, and bring it over to the for-profit side. And so we have kind of those last year counts, but not this year. And kind of the stuff we're maybe learning on processes or what you have on the for-profit side, bring it over. So that's where they're, they're different, but there's so much cross-pollination that can happen between mm-hmm. them. So, so mm-hmm. you have worked both profit and non-profit. Mm-hmm. So yeah. obviously there are differences, but there's also a difference in terms of where the money comes from in terms of the mind behind it, right? Mm-hmm. You're working with a company in a profit situation. A company, uh, group speaking, has a different psychology mm-hmm. than an individual does, yes. um, especially pertaining, pertaining to donations. So how does your work as a Salesforce admin reflect the different psychology? What do you do that is different? How do you set up things that are different that reflects the way of working with individuals. Yeah, so if I kind of like, you know, the the other very interesting thing with the nonprofit is what my good friend Irene I will always say is that there's a double bottom line in, uh, on the nonprofit side. A what double are, bottom a line. A double bottom line. Not just line. a bottom line. A double, yeah, a double, not just whoa. one, but two. And what I mean by that is that on the for-profit side, you know, really about, okay, what's the bottom line? You know, what's our profit at the end of the day? You know, did we make money or did we lose money? I mean, that, I mean, yeah, there's there's some certain things where we're trying to, you know, maybe better uh, community stewards and things like that. But that's really kind of what things are. On the for, on the nonprofit side, there's two bottom lines. So you have that surplus or that, that profit. You still need to keep the doors open. So you still need to have money coming in and, and have more money coming in than money going out. But at the same time, there's that programmatic bottom line. So are we making sure a mission is carried out? So are we doing, you know, if we're trying to, you know, end world hunger, are we working towards that. Actually ending World Hunter. Actually ending yeah. World Hunter. And so that's where, you know, as a Salesforce admin, you're kind of focused on, okay, well, you're looking at both of those bottom lines and how can I showcase how we're doing on both of those? Or how can I get into a, do an analytics to say, this is how we're doing financially or this is how we're doing pro- programmatically and get at those stats and try to figure out what are those key metrics and stats to go from there. 
Is it is it typical that consultant companies, from your experience talking to other companies, that they do both profit and nonprofit? Because I I I know there are companies that specialize just in nonprofit. Mm -hmm. Clearly, we know those exist, but mm -hmm. I haven't actually heard explicitly heard of companies that do both. Is My company company? does both. You do both? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do both. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so this is just me being ignorant. But then yeah. if I'm ignorant, then there are bound to be other people. Or it might just know. be the fact that I just don't talk about where I work on my podcast because it's a conflict of interest. Well, there is that. So, so yeah, I mean, yeah, there, there's definitely, I mean, you kind of look at specialization. So there's definitely people that specialize in different things. So whether it be, I don't know, maybe sales cloud or marketing cloud or, I mean, dare you say it, the nonprofit cloud. Um, actually, that we could, do you think we can make that happen, the nonprofit, nonprofit cloud? cloud? Yeah, talk to Mark. You go that? CEO yeah. at salesforce.com. Make it happen. I'll get on it right <laughs> after this. And so, um, you know, I kind of look at, there's there's definitely people that specialize in those different clouds. And then there's kind of these shops that maybe specialize in maybe not necessarily a cloud, but they're more specialized in more broader terms. And maybe they're strategic or maybe they're process oriented or whatever those types of things are. And that's where it doesn't really matter who you're working with or what they're trying to do, you know, whether it be widgets or donors, there's still things that could all apply from there. And so, yeah, I mean, it kind of depends upon the shop, I think. I Donor suppose. widgets? Donor widgets. Why not? It sounds like donuts. I'm hungry. I had Dunkin' Donuts this morning. I, you know, I was really upset because I was going to bring right, Dunkin' right, Donuts okay. to the group here because there was a Dunkin' Donuts supposedly at the Navy Pier. I go down. It turns out, no, they sell Dunkin' Donut coffee. And it was in like a convenience shop. And of course, it was closed. It was it's not very convenient. Then, it, was, it? it wasn't very convenient. No. It was also the furthest away that you could possibly get from the beginning of Navy Pier. Really so not convenient. It's like an inconvenient convenience store that was closed. <laughs> This sounds is how like, we, we, we stay like on topic a, really sounds well. Sounds like it's just a store that actually isn't even a store. Yeah. If if there's a store that never what opens, a does it exist? Plan. <laughs> I guess I have a box that I sometimes have clothes in that I maybe sell. I've had one sold. That could be a store, huh? Right, getting, getting back on track again. <laughs> so, uh, how long have you been doing the consulting business? I've been doing uh, consulting now for a year and a half. year and a half. Did you do other work before that? So or, or is this brand new? Like This consulting world is, is somewhat brand new. Um, you know, when I worked with a, the organization I worked with before, Students Today, Leaders Forever, STLF, they're awesome, they're cool. Um, give me a little shout out to them here. If that's allowed, we'll do it. Yeah, we'll sure. edit it out we'll later. edit it out. Okay. <laughs> Conflict um, of interest. <laughs> <laughs> so um, when I worked there, um, somehow we just were, our, I mean, our main goal was really be innovative. And, and that was, you know, working with these college and high school students all the time. And there's just, there's something about that age where there's always something they're, they're thinking that's super cool. And so we try to translate that over to what we were doing um, in our, on our work. And so we always were trying to be innovative. And as a result, some of the things that we were building in Salesforce, while they were very simplistic and, and not earth shattering, they were maybe were somewhat innovative or just um, MacGyver-esque, if you will. And so we... Um, through the nonprofit user group that was in town, we started to kind of talk through other people and ended up uh, getting to meet with people. It seemed like every month I was meeting with someone different about either showing what we were doing or getting to know what they were doing and trying to help them out. And so I almost had a flavor of consulting by accident where mm -hmm. um, we got to meet with these different people, learn what they were doing, and then help them out a little well, That's bit. often what happens at user groups a lot. I mean, exactly. I, just, mm -hmm. I ended up being one of those people who often helps people at user groups. Mm -hmm. That's just who you happens. are. Yeah. You're such a special guy, Mark. Go. He's smiling, just in case you can't mm. see, because this is an audio format only. Indeed. So, so do you find that you enjoy consultant work more than you did working for just a single organization? You know, it, there's certain things I, I really enjoy, or I've enjoyed on both sides of it. It's a very, very diplomatic answer. Um, <laughs> but you know what? what I like more on the consultant side is the variety of it. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if you have one Salesforce instance, you get to really, you get to know that. And, you know, when I transferred over to consulting, you know, I knew I didn't know a lot about Salesforce, but then when I got in consulting, you realize you know nothing at all about Salesforce. And you know, at the same time, you're like, you think you know a lot, but then you go, I know nothing. I know nothing. <laughs> and now I'm here being paid by people to do the things that I apparently know nothing about. Exactly. It's a Zen job. Yes. Exactly. Very Zen, very Buddhist. I mean, kind of think about it. I mean, Salesforce is such a, there's so many angles. There is you can no get to, job. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And so you, you know... Especially in this economy. Thanks a lot. <laughs> and there is no pay. <laughs> like, I got to know workflow rules a lot in the previous... You know, we did a lot of those. But now, um, you know, we didn't worry about security profiles. There was five of us that were in there. We were all system admins. Well, that's not... Ugh. That's frowned upon, I know. 
Ooh. But we had no real reason to, to go away from that oh, at the time. You would have eventually. I know you would have eventually. You know, we're, we're getting, I'm, I've already told him to get away from it. But at the time, you know, Indoors is bliss. You didn't, I mean, so we didn't know how to set up security profiles. And now, you know, I've learned, I've gone to the good side. So I, I have two things for you, Nick. Okay. First one. You are not encouraging our listeners to make everyone a system admin in their no, own No, by no, no, no means. No, no, no. no, I'm just saying that that was a poor decision. The second thing I have for you, Nick, is for those people who maybe are administrators now and mm-hmm. are thinking it's time for a change, mm-hmm. what is your advice to them mm-hmm. to when they're doing a consideration of, should I become a consultant? And maybe should I be specialized in a nonprofit consulting mm-hmm. agency? Yeah, you know, kind of figure, okay, do I go do another Salesforce admin job? Do I go do a consulting? Do I go do something specialized? I kind of look at the, the different things that I, I kind of look at my journey, you know, trying to figure, okay, what did I want to do next? And, you know, if, if you like variety, if you like kind of a constant col- challenge where you don't always know that answer, and because of that variety, there's always something new even every day that's going to be coming in. And at the same time, that someone wants to look to you as the expert. You know, I think that's really the, the main difference. I mean, uh, necessarily, you know, admins are very much the experts, and you're looked upon, but you're internal. You know, it's kind of you're expected to be the expert in kind of a different line than than being an external consultant, where you're coming in and someone's going, "I'm paying you to be here. You need to know your stuff." And so there's a little bit more leniency on an admin side versus a consultant. And so that's where I was trying to say, you know, where that line comes to be is from, okay, where, how much of an expert, even sometimes, how much are you wanting to maybe bluff or make up things on the spot just to try to sound smart and see what happens and kind of go from there. So, you know, if, if you're really good at thinking on your feet, consulting is a great thing for you. And there's nothing wrong with keeping some cheat notes. You know, some people oh, yeah. wonder why I wear the hat. The real mm-hmm. reason is because it's lined with cheat notes about the Salesforce oh, platform that I can pull out <laughs> at a moment's notice. The number of times I'm in a, in a meeting, I'll actually keep Salesforce up or Google up, and I'll start kind of just like, hey, I'm just going to, you know, let's just search for this. I don't know the answer for sure. Let's search for this. And mm-hmm. there are times I do that during a meeting. It happens Oh, yeah, so I do much. it all the time, even in my admin position. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, and I think from even a consultant the platform is so huge, you're not going to know everything. You can't know it's everything. It's impossible. But what's important well, to know is... you can be is good at finding it. Yes, you need exactly. to have the skills to know how to find it, find it quickly and understand mm-hmm. it quickly. Exactly. And know what's a bogus site and what's not a bogus site. Because mm-hmm. there are some sites out there that are purported as Salesforce information well, that are not On accurate. the internet? Bogus information? What? I know, you believe everything that's on the internet. What are you talking about? You just blown my mind. Now that Mark has no mind left, I think uh, it's it's time to close out the interview by saying thank you very much for joining us, yeah. Nick. We yes. really appreciate it, especially the fact that we asked you this morning. Hey, this is fun. I've been just flying it out all day. So if we want to do another one in like 10 minutes at the MVP <laughs> table, let's go have some fun. Now it's time for our Salesforce video of the undetermined amount of time until the next one. You know, Mark, we've been pretty consistent doing this every other week. Do we want to rename the segment? I'm thinking maybe we call it Clara. No, 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 no. No more names. No more ridiculous, completely undescript. No, I'm vetoing it, Brian. It's, we, it's, look, we've had, we have missed, we have missed once or twice. And look, look, it's a day later. We're actually, we're actually going to be one to two days later on this one. I mean, no, we're not. We're totally on time. We're totally in time. We did not lose our audio. Regardless, we're not doing Claire. Fine. Anyways, this video was highlighted during the opening keynote of the Midwest Dreaming by Dan Darcy. That's right. It is a video that was created by Gary Palmatier, MVP and uh, of Red Argyle. And what he made is a Lego version of Dreamforce. It's the original Lego movie. No, it isn't. Sure it is. You got a simple yet handsome hero, nonstop action, and I'm pretty sure Will Ferrell's in it. I don't think we saw the same video. Gary created this video to show how he was going to get Dreamforce ready back in 2000. I mean, and, and he get himself ready for Dreamforce, not getting Dreamforce itself ready. That would have been a lot more than one man could be. And pretty impressive if you did it. Oh, it's a yeah. great video. It really shows off that Gary is both passionate about Salesforce and Legos. 
and probably that he had a bit too much time on his hands back in 2011. I don't know, Brian. Any time spent with Legos, I don't consider that having a bit too much time on your hands. That's just time well spent. Speaking of Dreamforce, that's coming up in September this year. What are you doing to get Dreamforce ready, Mark? You mean ready for Dreamforce, not get, getting Dreamforce itself actually ready? I think we already kind of covered that. Let's see. Uh, well, there is the hot, the hands-on training that you and I are putting on. Oh, that's right. I, I believe we're going to be doing something about advanced flows that's sure to be loopy. Yes, actually, we will be covering loops and fast elements and things like that. How to get large sets of data. Uh, one of the things that Flow is actually most, most useful for these days. So if you want to come, learn a whole bunch about advanced flows, see me in my little pointy wizard hat, and Mark in his Yoda ears, please come to our hot. I don't have Yoda ears, Brian. I don't have them yet. You should totally That's... have... You know the, You know what? You should get Yoda ears for Dreamforce. Why? I already have Jedi robes, Brian. Why do I need... Yoda ears. I have just a Jedi robe, too. I'm still going to wear my hat. I think you have to have Yoda ears. Besides, our whole logo came up with a hat and Yoda ears. But if you don't have the Yoda ears, then we're kind of like not telling the complete truth. When it comes my, to I, my ears get very hot, Brian. My ears get very right. hot. It makes me very comfortable. This is what we're going to do. We're okay. going to create a new group on the success community. Yeah. And we're going to post a poll there. So if you think that Mark Ross should acquire and wear oh, Salesforce Yoda ears at Dreamforce next year, vote for that. Otherwise, tell us that you really don't want to see Mark wearing that type of paraphernalia. Oh, wow. Uh, I just heard the words Mark and paraphernalia in the same sentence. I don't hear that very often. On that same note, since we are going to be there, we're going to be speaking not only about the hot, we're actually, I think we might be participating in another uh, session as well. Yeah. Safe Haba, we will have at some point an unofficial or official, however you prefer to look at it, meeting of the Flownatics, the yes. annual meeting that we have. And uh, I think, I think we should have it at one of the local watering holes. No, 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 no. We should have it no? at the admin zone. Okay? There's going to be plenty of space for us. It is queued to administrators at all about Flownatics. Besides, we should really come out and show the numbers and just show the fact that there are so many of us flown addicts that we should be paid attention to. I suppose, but hashtag why SFDC admins drink, Brian. It's it's a perfect chance yeah, to... Yeah, it's, it's why do Salesforce admins drink, not why do flown addicts drink. The um, Salesforce and the admin zone can be just as loud and just as packed as any bar. In fact, some bars probably less so. You know, I've been to the bars down and around Howard Street. It's always packed it's always cramped i'm a hundred percent positive that we have so many numbers that we're going to need the space that moscone west provides that's only if you go to the good bars brian if you go to one of the dive bars there's plenty of space and nobody's there are you saying our flanatic num members are not good enough for the good bars i'm just saying there's space fine at, at, at fine the, at the places let's do this democratically ish mm -hmm. we'll post ish. a second poll in our group. A second poll a second poll a second poll Yes, because the first one's going to be whether or not you wear ears. The second poll yes, no, is I going know, to be... I know that. Well, you sound like you were confused, so I'm trying to clarify it for you. I'm, I'm just... I'm, I'm flabbergasted. We have the audacity to do two polls in one day, Brian. Two polls! I think our listeners can handle it. Yeah. Oh. The second poll will be where should we hold our meeting of the Flonatics? Since we're not doing a session this year on the Flow Code, we're going to have an uh, informal meeting of the Flonatics. Should it be at a mysterious, mythical, non-packed dive bar that Mark believes exists near Howard Street? Or should we hold it in the admin zone, and if there's enough of us, we take over the dev zone, too? I, I will point this out in the interest of fairness and, and discourse across the board that uh, we may also be recording an episode in the admin zone at some point. Again, safe harbor. Wouldn't it be interesting if we managed to coincide the Flonatic meeting with her podcast episode? That's just madness. Nobody could handle that level of insanity, Brian. That's no. I don't. Oh, oh, I'm get, I'm getting verklempt. I'm getting, I'm getting a little bit hot around the gills here. I just thinking about it. I think we should do that. Uh, that let's make that another another option in the poll, or or, or let the people speak. Let the people speak yeah. to it. If if you would, if you think. It would be a great idea to have our full attic meeting as part of our podcast episode. Add a comment to the poll and let us know that that sounds something awesome. 
because chances are the podcast episodes and the podcast booth in general are going to be in the admin zone anyways. So that means I win. Dang it. WizardCast is produced by Brian Kwong and Mark Ross, directed by Brian Kwong and Mark Ross, technical administration by Brian Kwong and Mark Ross, script writing by Brian Kwong and Mark Ross, audio editing by Brian Kwong and Mark Ross, website maintenance by Brian Kwong and Mark Ross, backpack inspection by Brian Kwong, and our intern this episode is Christy Guzman. Thanks for listening, Christy. Thanks, Christy. Send us your interview suggestions, jokes, videos, tips, and feedback to wizardcast at thewizardnews.com or head over to thewizardnews.com and click contact wizardcast. Don't forget to subscribe to the wizardcast and receive our next episode automatically. Once again, I'm Brian. And I'm Mark. Thanks for listening. Are you pondering what I'm pondering, Mark? I don't know, Brian. Maybe I should look up something to follow up that sentence with. <laughs> <laughs> the choices and opinions expressed here by Nick do not reflect the uh, button click admin. Not button click We're not button, button click admin. Where did I get that from? I need coffee. We can be, I suppose. No, we can't. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mike Gerhalt. <laughs> <laughs> and joining me is Jillian. Hi. <laughs> oh, We'll see for that. Sorry, Mike. Sorry, 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 Julie. But button click no, admin. I'm is, sorry. But button click admin is a trademark, and we should not be using it. No, we'll probably have to edit all that out. No, no, Mike will be fine with okay. it. We'll put it in the outtakes at the end. Okay. <laughs>